episode 10. We made it to 10 episodes. That's kind of crazy. Kind of nuts. This is War 98. Day 2. Day 2, War 98. And they have made Morgan's Crossing usable, which is amazing. I was talking about this last war, how they haven't made this, uh, the last couple wars, they haven't made this hex very usable for Lodgy. But now it's useful. I'm going to talk about this hex just for a little bit here and why it's useful. It's especially, I think, especially useful for solo Lodgy. Um, and I think it's just kind of nice. One thing I should note right, right away is like I still do love Stone Cradle. I loved Helm's Cave and Stone Cradle for solo Lodgy. It just has a lot of good routes into uh, Fahrenheit Coast and Lend Mercy and stuff. But what I like to do is switch it up. You know, I like to play one war in Stone Cradle and Calm's Cape. And then I do like to play more Morgan's Crossing. Like Crossing. Uh, luckily, last war, they did a, a East versus West, so I got to play down here. But it's it's always nice to find a new area if you can, um, just to not dream yourself out. Like, if, you, if I played in, like, Stone Cradle every single war, like, I would, you know, I would burn myself out. So I'm really excited that Morgan's Crossing uh, is a lot more usable this war. So I've done Lodgy and Morgan's Crossing before. Like I said, it kind of just comes up. Uh, it's been it's been probably like five or six wars since I've done it now, maybe even like closer to ten. Uh, but what makes it really nice, uh, especially for solo Lodgy, um, is there's no mass factory. And you might say, well, you know, that makes it a terrible Lodgy Town because there's no mass factory. But that means bigger clans and groups actually stay out of this uh, hex a lot more than uh, hexes with mass factories. So that opens these two factories up for me to use a lot more often. That opens up these salvage mines for me to get. You know, it just opens up all the resources for me to get a lot easier than I'm trying to fight uh, clan people over it. I'm able to get these scroop yards that are super close. They're both to zero. But I mean, usually one of these two or even three are usually pop and up. And it's just a short drive back up here. I mean, there's already three K baby mats in public right now. And this is only day two, which is kind of crazy. Um, but just speaking about this hex in general, like you have these close uh, scrap yards. You have these close mines that are always right here. These three and then these three too. Um, the way resources are kind of allocated on this is we'll build resources in these factories. We'll sometimes just store them simply in here if we don't have a lot of time, but then we'll bring them down to this seaport right over here. So we'll travel to this seaport. Eventually we'll get some freighters going and then we'll bring them down to Axe Head down here. So into uh, God's Craft or God Craft, whatever you want to call it. Um, and then from here, this is kind of where it gets a little bit tricky, um, but we start to distribute these resources from like here to uh, above Salt Creek, is it Salt Salt Brook? We'll put it over here. Like, oh, they already have 143 <laughs> storage. It's insane. Hopefully, we have some good builders over there. But essentially, we crawl out from here and go this direction, and then we go to this storage depot down here, and then this one by Nugget Island. And we this is kind of our main gameplay for this solo lobby. It's like these three storage depots, and then Salt Brook once we take it, um, and then that's kind of where we do our solo lobby. Uh, hub basically the entire war. Uh, we might branch out over here if we uh, end up taking this, um, but our main thing is building a lot of resources up here in the top right, taking it to this seaport, and then traveling down. This is such a short freighter mission right here. It's probably less than, definitely less than 10 minutes, probably seven. I remember a long time ago, I used to do freighter runs back uh, from, this, from this seaport, and I would bring freighters back here to bring resources over. Um, I really don't feel like you need to bring resources over to this seaport um, unless you maybe lose this entire hex, maybe, but Axe Head is a lot more important. I've always kind of hated this seaport. It's kind of in a bad location, I think. I think it could have been in a better location, um, but this one's a lot more important. So I don't know. As you can tell, I'm just really excited to be playing on this side again. Um, tonight I'm going to be probably just gathering some scroop and doing some crafty because it's early war. So what I want to do is just craft a bunch of mammons and get set up and yeah. I'll show you kind of what I'm doing here in a sec. Make sure we grab our wrench. We can put the bullets away. Grab our wrench. Find a truck. Oh, 
funny enough, I did log in on the very first day that this war started, and I had a, I did a good deeds episode. If you've seen that. The good deeds was just helping people uh, build lodgy trucks. It was really fun to do. So I spent like three or four hours doing that, uh, just helping people, and it felt really nice. It was good. Got a lot of commends out of it too, which is good. We found a truck. Uh, one thing I haven't noted in my videos, what you want to do and make sure it's not squad locked, put your hammer in and then pull it back out. Now we know that this truck is not squad locked. I've got burned so many time, times on wrenching a truck and then taking it to go craft or go gather bee mats or anything just to find out that it's squad locked. So I don't know if they, maybe people in chat or in comments want to tell me a, a better way, but uh, this is how I figure out essentially if it's squad locked right away is I just move my hammer over and then I move it back and we got this lottery truck. The Morgan's Crossing unfortunately does have a parking lot. Um, there was a sign here earlier. Yeah. Uh, public parking prohibited. Put vehicles in store. This person knows what's up. This Mr. Pato. This person knows they must have maybe watched my video or they just are experienced enough too to know that parking Parking lots are useless. Put it in the storage depot. It'll get used more often. People will know it's there. That type of thing. But it has this parking lot that we'll probably be cleaning up a lot this war. Two factories. The construction site over there. Storage depot. It's just all, you know, garage, refinery. It's all by each other in a really good spot. One thing that I set up, and this is something I saw from a war a long time ago. This is my sign, actually, too is putting a crane right here. You put a crane right here, and you can actually, from the construction site, you know, build a storage depot, or a storage, a storage box, and then you can put it like right here. The crane can grab it, put it over here, and then we can store it away. So a lot of laundry hubs have little tricks like this, and this is always a good one to learn. So I'm gonna do a quick example uh, to show you kind of how it works. And that is it. It's little tricks like that that um, I haven't learned them all for all the Logi hubs. There's little things like that at each Logi hub where you can place certain items, certain things that just make uh, every Logi player's life a lot easier. So I'm going to clean up these other crates too. A really good idea to do at the beginning of a war as a solo logic player um if you are able to do this um i guess i say when you are able to do this like i i normally really don't start until day two or three just because a lot of clans are usually taking the scroop yards a lot and it's like fighting over resources um but again it's with morgan's crossing since there's not a mass factory that it's a little bit it's, it's not as populated so it's easy to get scroop a little bit easier but on the first day i was able to get quite a bit of scroop and what you want to do is build up this explosive materials uh, pile as soon as you can. And you want to keep trying to build this because um, we want to build mammoths right now. We really want to build uh, mammoths. I'm going to start taking these resources while I'm talking. I should have done this before. <laughs> um, but we really want to build a lot of mammoths because um, they were super important at the beginning of the war. Basically, as a solo logic too, we go from mammoths um, 
into 40 millimeter. And then that's pretty much the only two things you really have to craft with explosive material um, to be really effective in war. I feel like for, for solo logic, you know, obviously if you're doing clan stuff and operations um, and doing artillery and stuff, um, but if you as a solely logic, logic player want to make a difference, you want to build a lot of maintenance and 40 millimeter. Those will be the main things that you focus on with explosive material. I mean, I have a video that that goes over all factory items and what you should build and when you should build it. So if you're confused on that or want to know that, just find that video um, and watch it and I explain it a lot better. But uh, yeah, we want this explosive material here. Uh, you just want to keep building this. If you can, because again, it doesn't expire for two days once you refresh it. So I need to grab some scroop and refresh it. Um, so as long as you're on once every 48 hours, you can just keep it. Um, and I'm not, it's it's not hoarding it. It's such a small supply anyways. I mean, if I'm not on for 12, 48 hours, it's going to get put into public. So, oops, grab a, grab a gas can or did I grab the uh, components? Oops. Um, yeah, so we're going to, we're going to make some mammons right now. Always make sure we're checking uh, this as well. Pull that. It's free commands too. So I'm at 41 commands. Could get some for this. Yeah, 42. So it's free commands too to give out to people when you look at public, like what people are being put in public. And then I just put it in storage anyway. So if you want some free commands to give out to people, always check that. I'm just putting these into the storage depot. You don't get any commands for submitting to the storage depot right here, so I don't really care. I just need to pour, I need to, Go I'm basically what I'm trying to do is make sure I don't it. accidentally submit this stuff. So I really should have uh, looked and started building other items too. Um, I was just kind of too focused on the mammon. So we're looking at the storage depot, like I've done in other videos with Logilus. This one right over here, you use Somebody's it to build me. guns, ammunition, materials, training supplies, somebody. and so on and so forth. This is also where you get the uh, garrison supplies to make sure uh, your building, the buildings you make, don't rot away. The, the maintenance tunnel is that something you build, or is that something that's already pre-existed, like the factories? Nope, the maintenance tunnel is something I build. Where do you have to lay shit underground, or is it just like point to point? Oh, the the good news about the maintenance. I didn't really want to listen to him the, the whole time, but yeah, there's a lot of that. This is a good note. There's a lot of friendly people in this game. If you follow like the subreddit or like any forums, that's where all the negative people go and all the whiners and people that just like to complain all the time. But in the actual game, 95% of the people are super friendly. Like if you don't know anything about the game, even watching this, you're like confused. They will help you. Like, I, I don't know how many times I've like, Somebody had a question, and I just grabbed them and then spent, like, an hour, like, teaching them everything I know about this game. So, you know, just always ask somebody, and, like, 95% of the time, again, somebody will somebody will help you. Um, so, yeah. Uh, we were looking at the storage depot on what we should build. So, for medical supplies, um, I have a, a bunch of videos called Logi List, um, where I kind of talk about, you know, how do you, do, how do you know what to build? So, in this instance, looking over it, for the medical, we don't need to build bandages. We don't need to build shirts really right now. I could build a few, um, but I should focus on these guys, the first aid boxes. And then we want to look at utilities. So utilities, we got a lot of radios. Uh, we got some wrenches, so it looks like we need binoculars, essentially. Binoculars are good. Um, I don't build the landmines for a little while, probably like three or four more days, and then we start focusing on the gas mech and stuff like that. Uh, but we'll do binoculars, which aren't even teched right now. I'm a big noob, but never mind. Um, I'm actually probably actually, now that I'm thinking about it, then I'm not going to worry about utility right now. I'm going to save my resources. Um, for infantry, I, I always just focus on 762 stuff. So I focus on either uh, the Blake or um, just building 76, 762 in general.
are just going to kind of com just keep doing this loop right here of taking like the public VMATs, the VMATs we have. And we're just going to do this little loop until the resources are gone, and then we'll do our next objective. But we're, we're, what we're going to do too is we just put these crates in this storage depot right next to us. So uh, I've gone through this in all my other videos, but like tonight, I'm just putting it resources in here. So another night, I would grab a flatbed in here soon because there's going to there's starting to be a lot of resources in here. I grab a flatbed and a crate, and I you know I do a couple runs down here and start filling this seaport up. And then you know another night, I do a freighter down to uh, God God's Craft or Axet over here. Um, but you never just do all of those in one fell swoop, you know. You don't, you don't, you don't do it in one night. I'm not going to make all this stuff, grab a flatbed, and and dra drive it down here. Nope. I'm going to build up the materials. We're going to build up this seaport so we can get a freighter with five crates, and then we're going to move it down here. So that's that's going to be you know a couple nights and things. I don't really care to like fill this storage depot up too much. I think this seaport's a lot more important. Um, yeah, we're going to keep crafting for a little while, and then we'll go on to our next objective. So we've used up quite a bit of public. I mean, I can take this 1.2 and more explosive material, but I'll, I'll keep this here. Um, but we've used up quite a bit of public resources, but these salvage mines, you know, again, this, uh, all, you, all I have to do is go here, make the rotation, start the, the refinery, um, and then I can just, like, do this constant loop here of refining into B mats. You know, making stuff to the factory, grabbing salvage mine stuff, and I can just continuously do this, um, especially as long as no one else is really focusing on these salvage mines. I don't need to worry about going and getting screw. Um, just kind of bad for tech. You know, I don't I don't help tech obviously out by doing this, but um, for making resources, it's perfect. This this continuous loop right here. I'll kind of show you that how that works. And that is uh, pretty much the loop. I had to move up here because there was other people talking. But that's pretty much the loop. Uh, and then, you know, I got BMATs going. I got explosive material, which is going to last me a really long time. But I'll just do this continuous loop of getting BMATs, you know, getting salvage mine. Sometimes I have to do the salvage mine run, like, one more time. Like, I might have to do that this time, is run, get salvage uh, before the BMATs catch up. But then I just eventually get to a threshold where I can just continuously do this run the entire time up in Morgan's Crossing. Get salvage, mine it into like BMATs or something, use those to create stuff, get the factory going, put it in a storage depot, run back to the salvage mine, and then I just do this continuous loop, which just pumps out resources. Robert, move. I'm in the way of something. Right, so it's not like it just sits segregated. What People happens to the People talking everywhere. If one, if it... I'm trying to move out of the way. I'm in a terrible spot. Okay. But uh, yeah, that's essentially the cycle, and it's early war, so there's not like a ton to do right now. So that's pretty much what I'm going to be doing the rest of tonight. Um, I'm not going to record it or anything, but I'm just letting you know uh, that this is going to be my cycle. It's just continuing that. Um, yeah, this so should be a shorter episode. Um, episode 10, again, thank you so much for, for watching and, you know, giving me your feedback on what you do as a Logic player. I really appreciate that. 
it's again been really fun to record these and do my commentary um, and I'm going to continue to do that. I, I like making other uh, random off videos as well. That kind of explains things more specifically. So I'm going to keep doing that as well. Um, hopefully this war goes okay. <laughs> I don't know, we're off to a really rough start as wardens, like, this could be a really quick war. Um, in my my personal uh, preference for, like, what a good war is, is any war, like, past 25 days. Anything below 25 days, to me, seems like, I don't know, something was off. There wasn't the player base, um, we just didn't have the right building, or just some, I don't know, I don't, you know, I don't know offensive uh, balance very well because I do a lot of logic but it just seems like if a war is under 25 days something something was off um I just I think a good match is 25 days plus when we have like a really good war between the collies and the wardens so um as a logic player you just do what you can um sometimes it feels bad it feels like you're working hard and you know creating resources and doing stuff and uh you know I could be doing this the next you know four or five days and then the war could be over which is you know unfortunate or it could be unfortunate you know you feel like you're doing a lot in your area and we you know, we push up or we do really good but maybe the other side is not doing well um but, i mean that's kind of the logic player like me that likes to just play on one side of the map i know i know other logic players that like like they will look through this entire map and then they will see like you know, kind of where the most important they have like their own high priority list and where they need to go when they look at this and i don't like doing that <laughs> i just i like choosing one side of the area and then just focusing on that so maybe you people that uh do the whole map can explain your thought process to me uh and that would be great but yeah thanks for letting me do this for 10 episodes and i i continue i'm going to continue doing it more and thanks for watching cheers